summarized, June 29, 2020 by Anna Von writes. Now that you woke up and declared and recorded your political status as an American state national or American state citizen, it's time to wake up to other fun facts as well. For example, there are supposed to be three, three federal subcontractors supplying the services of the federal government, one an American federal subcontractor doing business as the States of America Confederation, which has been missing in action since 1865, two a British territorial subcontractor that is doing business in our names as the United States of America, and three a papist Holy Roman Empire subcontractor doing business in our name as the United States. Yes, Virginia, there are supposed to be three branches of the federal government but that fact has nothing to do with the executive, legislative, and judicial branches within these governmental organizations. What isn't so obvious is that the two remaining foreign federal subcontractors are both under the direction of the Pope. The British territorial subcontractor is under the law of the British Commonwealth, and the Commonwealth is managed by the Queen acting for the Pope. The remaining two federal subcontractors are foreign and always have been, and both are directly or indirectly under the control of the Pope, and all those who are working for them in any capacity are foreign agents. This includes not only the members of the U.S. Congress, but their franchise employees operating the state of state governments around the country, and their agency employees at the federal level, FBI, FEMA, CIA, etc., they are all undeclared foreign agents on our shores, and always have been. See the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act and understand that every federal employee, including those operating the federated states of states and counties, are all foreign agents with respect to us. They have their own little world and jurisdiction and separate government and are immune to our laws, except for the pertinent constitution, while we, for our part, are forever immune from them and their system. See Amendment 11. Using these undisclosed facts and relationships to his advantage, the Pope could hide behind the governmental services corporations he hired and put in place as storefronts, while manipulating everything and everyone behind the scenes. That is no longer possible. If the federal government is mismanaged, misdirected, or misinformed, we know exactly who to blame for it. The Queen gets her share of the profits from embezzling and other crimes against us, but on the back end of it, as a loyal employee of the Pope. So, it's Il Papa responsible for this mess, and only secondarily, the Queen. Though the perps try to obfuscate this next part, we don't have any contracts with the direct service providers they hired. Our contracts are established in our role as principals and our contracts are directly with the Pope, the Queen, and the Lord Mayor of London. We don't have a contract with these failed and bankrupt corporations that they put in place to act as shields and storefronts for them. The situation is analogous to this, I hire Tom to make my Saturday bank deposits for me, so that I can enjoy the weekends off. Tom decides he wants a weekend off, and without telling me, hires his cousin Amos to do his job for him. So he hands my bank deposit to Amos, and Amos runs off with it. Who is to blame for this? Well, Amos is a crook, and we all know that. But who is accountable to me? Tom is accountable to me. So if the Pope hires the British Crown Corporation to make my bank deposit and they run away with my money, guess what? My issue is with the Pope, and only secondarily with the BCC. It's the same way in all respects and all the way down the line. If the Pope's municipal government hires a bunch of alphabet soup agency subcontractors, and those subcontractors misbehave and steal my deposit, who is accountable to me? Again, my issue and yours, is with the Pope, and only secondarily with the United States, Inc. And in a tertiary sense, the FBI or IRS or BATF. Our issue does not change as a result of the bankruptcy, solvency or insolvency, of these storefront organizations. Our beef remains with the Pope. He's the one who has contracts with these entities, not us. They are his cousin Amos, and in the case of the federal agencies, his cousin Sue, too. Keeping his cousins in line and restoring our purloined property is his problem, not ours. As a foreign government, we don't intend to make it our problem, either. 
Francis and Benedict, both, are on the hot seat for all of this, and secondarily, all their minions, the Queen, the Lord Mayor, the British Territorial United States, and the Municipal United States, and all their subcontractors and franchisees and officers, including the state of state governors and the agencies, are responsible for their criminal acts and breaches of trust committed on our land and soil. Cousin Sue may have done the dirt and hid the money, but Cousin Amos opened the back door for her to get into the house, and at the end of the day, the fact remains that my contract is with the Pope. If our people are being seized upon and enslaved under a bizarre illegal and immoral and unlawful racketeering scheme by Cousin Amos, that's Francis's problem, too. The Pope's municipal government has been trying to foment a race war, based on Cousin Amos's crimes. They think that they can cause the problem, misdirect our attention from the fact that white people have been enslaved in the land of the free in the exact same way as black people, and somehow skate out of being culpable for all of this. Fat chance. There's not going to be a civil war here. Our actual government, which is not always in session, has been called into session. We've told our erstwhile subcontractors that we are at peace and that they are not allowed to conduct any kind of war on our shores. We have observed to the Pope that as he controls both sides of any such conflict, he is responsible for any disservice. We won't be paying him to stage any wars on our shores, municipal, territorial, or otherwise. He will be identified as a diabolical schemer and anything but a Christian, if he doesn't put on his size 11 police brogues and deal with Cousin Amos and Cousin Sue and honor his contracts with us. Our contracts are the respective constitutions, one each. The Constitution of the United States of America as ratified by the States of the Union applies to the British territorial government and all its personnel. The Constitution of the United States as ratified by the States of the Union applies to the municipal United States government and all its personnel. Now that our state assemblies have been called into session and populated by people properly identifying themselves as American state citizens, there can be no mistaking of the circumstance or our identity as the principles owed performance of these venerable contracts, down to the last jot. If there continues to be any misunderstanding of these facts by Cousin Sue, a.k.a. the Alphabet Soup Agencies, or by Cousin Amos, a.k.a. the Municipal Government, or Cousin Alphonse, a.k.a. the Territorial Government, guess who is responsible for giving the orders and sorting it out? We, for our part, demand peace on our shores, the return of our purloined assets, and scrupulous adherence to the constitutions owed to the American states and people by the Pope and his subcontractors. All of them, including the subcontractors of the subcontractors. That includes the end of phony live exercises and media propaganda related to the ongoing COVID-19 false flag on our shores and the correction of all state-of-state -state governor franchisees, and the correction of all alphabet soup agency subcontractors, telling them to stand down and mind their own business. Obey their respective constitutions. Stop meddling in their employers' lives and affairs. Stop imposing their rules, regulations, codes, statutory laws and other internal corporate laws on their employers. Their employers are law-abiding, foreign to them, and living in their own country, thank you. It is the absolute obligation of the Pope to return our people and our property to us, unharmed and unencumbered, to keep the peace here and abroad, and to honor his contracts with our states and people in all respects. Links to Anna's articles and resources can be found in the video description box. Thank you for subscribing, liking and sharing. If you enjoy having Anna's latest articles made into videos, please consider making a purchase from Ed's website sacredintuitiveelements.com. Thank you.